my father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, I said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, look, and my father was a Japanese, very tall, six foot four, and an imposing man, good guy. But he says, if I learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I asked him. He said, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money. Or they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money. Because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> it's like, it's the, it's the cat, you know, which just comes first, the cat or the, you know, the, the cat chasing its tail. And I said, so how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice basically, but I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally one day I got upset. I said, well, when are you gonna teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one green house. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four green houses, one red hotel. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. Went, is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys. Because Waikiki was a little dirt water, little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he, then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, it I, just, and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. And I know the game of the rich. You know, my, my rich dad taught me, you know it because you're the banker. 
the game the bankers and the rich play is different than what they teach you in school. All over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. And that's not a mistake. That's not an accident. I knew that, most people know that. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. So if you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, which came out in 1997, it's what the rich teach their kids about money, the poor and middle class do not. And so that's when I, I came out with Rich Dad Poor Dad, the cash flow game, because poverty hurts. I mean, I don't like it. And I don't like that our academic system is so corrupt. You know, we, we know the banking system is corrupt. We know politics is corrupt. But, ac but academics is just as corrupt. So I just said, well, if exactly as Fuller said, what does God want done? Not what I want done. Martin Luther King said another way. He says, King says, I just want to do God's will. So that's what I cover in faith. What does God want done? In one thing, if it's the banking and the politics, but this is where we send our children and we trust them to do the right things for them. And yet they're being not taught something so fundamental. Like you asked your dad when you were a kid, Dad, you asked your teacher, when are you going to tell, teach us about money? And it was just, never. Oh, never. And I never will. You know something. What do you know? Share it. It is financial education. It's not get a job, work hard, save money, and invest in a well-diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. That's not it. You know, money is, the, the, the financial industry is two things, debt and taxes. Debt and taxes. And that's where fake starts. 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, and the U.S. dollar became debt. And we still tell kids to go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, and get out of debt. Now, who tells them to do that? That's the most ridiculous thing there is. The book starts and it says, lie number one, saving money will make you rich. Yeah, it never will. You well, know that. We're all taught that as kids. Why do you keep saving when they're printing it? The rich don't work for money. Don't you touch that stuff. It's very subtle, right? Yep. They don't say, I'm going to train you to be a worker bee the rest of your life, but they educate you in a way where that's what you come out. Right. Forcing your brain to be uncomfortable so it could turn it into kind of the entrepreneurial brain, right? right. What were some of the things he was doing? Because for a young kid, I mean, it must have been flabbergasting, right? Well, he said, I said, I want you to teach me about money. So it was, so why should I teach you? You go to school, your dad's going to, dad, my poor dad's not going to teach you. He says, I said, oh, finally, he acquiesced. He said, okay. He says, but if I teach you, you work for me for free. And I said, why for free? And my dad, my poor dad went nuts. He says, said, if I pay you, you think like an employee. Your, brains will, your brain will change. If you learn never to work for money, you'll be a rich man. What else was he, what was he trying to do those first few months where you were working for him? What was he trying to get? across to you because he taught you the hard way about money and she says if you're going to be a successful in your life you've got to find the best teachers and a great teacher is somebody who comes from the inside not the outside but in school you don't know if your instructor is for real or not that's where the fake teacher comes from when I was in my MBA program I was still in the Marine Corps I came back from the war I'm in the MBA program and Back then, this, this is 73 now, and the students were spitting on me, yelling at me, at University of Hawaii, you know. I'm, I'm there, I was stupid enough to go in my Marine Corps outfit, my, my flight suit. And they were yelling at me, baby killer and all this. I'm sitting in this classroom, and my MBA accounting teacher doesn't know accounting, you know, I'm going, I'm going nuts. I'm not an accountant, but I knew he wasn't an accountant also, so I took him on I said, I said, are you an accountant? He goes, I have a master's in accounts. I said, that's not the question. Are you an accountant? I have a master's in accounts. He said. And I stood up and I said, you know, Marines are not the brightest guys. I said, Give a, are you an accountant? Same answer. I said, you're a fake. You don't know what you're talking about. And to this day, when I listen to what people are teaching kids about accountancy, it's bad accountancy. Right, because it's not practical. It's not real world. It's confusing. Right, right. 
You know, assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money from your pocket. So anyway, this is what's going on in the world economy today. So the baby boomers are gonna retire now. Student loans are bust. So, do you have to be an economist to say what's gonna happen? Because they, this, we're fighting a 12 year war now. Entitlements are going through the roof. National debt to GDP is 109 in America, 109%. 90% is too late. We have to keep printing now. So this is called bubble nomics, and this is what's going to happen. <laughs> got it? I got it. Is that economics 101? <sighs> Scary stuff. It's happened throughout history.